saluting Chisinau, got the Arkul, the triumph behind me. It's an historical monument here in the center of Moldova's capital. And all things historical and historical vestiges are relevant to today's video because I'm going to be outlining a few options for citizenship by descent that might be relevant to you if you want to live in the region I'm calling New Europe. So eastern part of the European Union and a little bit of the part outside of it. And many intelligent, well-educated, normally informed North Americans, in my experience, don't understand that they might be entitled to a passport from one of the European Union countries that would give them the automatic right to reside and live in any of the member states of the European Union. It kind of surprises me. And that is the genesis of today's video is my trip here to Chisinau because I have a client who has lived as our experience with me and you know he wants to live in Poland and he approached another service to inquire about residency, citizenship by investment, residency by investment uh, that is pretty big here on YouTube and they try to pitch him the normal invest in Malta, a million euros, uh, invest in Portugal and that gives you residency in principle and then maybe down the road you can get a passport citizenship and a passport but it is quite a big investment and it takes a while and they never asked him the very obvious thing that someone who had met him and chatted to him would have probably figured out and that is what is your heritage where are your parents from where are your grandparents from it turns out these parents were born here in well Dova. And that may entitle him to a Moldovan citizenship and a Romanian citizenship because this part of Moldova was one stage in Romania and they actually give citizenship by descent in certain conditions. So Moldova is not in the European Union but Romania is. So actually a Romanian passport would allow him to actually live but any other res restriction or need to pay for a residency or a visa in a country like Poland, which is also a European Union member. And I completely missed this, this other YouTube channel when he spoke to them. So today's video, I'm going to outline a few of the most common citizenship by descents that, you know, I help clients with, or I just tell my friends about when I hear where they're from. And, you know, I used to work as a lawyer back in the day. So I have a little bit more of an astute, discerning attitude uh, to the background and the heritage and how the rules work on citizenship and in particular ones that are going to be pertinent to living 3 to 12 months a year in this region. So let's get into it. Hi Samarjim. Sar experience. So let me just add in that even if getting a passport won't give you residency rights somewhere, it may give you extra visa free rights so you can come and visit, right? So that can be your first step to exploring the region. Like typically here in Moldova, most Western passports have 90 days visa free every 180. That means you can come and stay here. You can't work here, or reside here permanently, obviously, but it is a good first step. So even if you get a passport, like say a Moldovan passport is not an EU passport at the moment, even though it's an EU candidate country, having it may give you some additional visa free rights um, maybe not to live in you know poland or romania necessarily but could actually help you with some other countries like for, for example because this client is american uh, brazil plans to reintroduce visas for american citizens to go to brazil very shortly about a month uh, from when i'm shooting this video uh, but if you have a moldovan passport for example then it's still going to be visa free so just keep that in mind that some other passports even if they don't give you residency might still be valuable in some sense to you even if you're an American citizen right so when you have that strong US passport now being an Irishman we're gonna start with the most obvious citizenship by descent for Americans in particular since there are this you know every American basically me tries to claim to be Irish and on some level and there are over 30 million people in the US who claim to be Irish Americans or maybe in fact Irish Americans and Ireland will give citizenship to people who have ancestors who are born on the island of Ireland not just the Republic of Ireland but the actual entire island even Northern Ireland which is part of the United Kingdom and it goes back normally two generations so 
great, so normally grandparents, but under exceptional circumstances, it may actually go back to great grandparents, right? So you need to come to Ireland, have a pint of Guinness, obviously in the local pub where your ancestors are from, like Barack Obama did. Uh, I think his ancestors were a little bit too far back for him to be able to claim citizenship. Maybe if it asked for it, actually Ireland would have given it to him. Uh, found a way to give it to him, but as far as I know, he didn't ask for citizenship. He just went to see where his ancestors were from. And yeah, that is for most of my American clients. The first thing I'll start with, have you any Irish in you? Because that is obviously a pretty strong passport to have as well. The Irish passport, one of the ones with the most visa free in the world. Obviously, Ireland is a member of the European Union. So what most people sometimes forget is that even though Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom, Ireland, the Republic of Ireland may grant citizenship if you've answered this also from there. So if you're Ulster Scots, for example, and you have some ancestors who left, say, Belfast on the Titanic. Well, not on the Titanic, because I never made it, but a ship similar to it. Get back! Well, then, yeah, you might be entitled to an Irish passport, an Irish citizenship, and then afterwards you get the travel document, which is the Irish passport. So the second most common one that comes up, and I actually do have a client who got this, it is the Italian citizenship because Italy doesn't have a limit on generations. So if you can prove that you have Italian lineage going back uh, to somewhere where they were born or they were a citizen of Italy at some stage. Italy was founded on the 17th of March, 1861. So before that, there was no Italy. So if your, citizen, if your ancestors were born, you can trace direct lineage and they never renounced their citizenship. And it was passed down, passed down, passed down because we have what's known as use sanguinis in law, which is the right by blood. And you also have use soli, which is the right by soil or territory. So this is obviously going by blood. If you're say an Italian American and you're from New Jersey and uh, you know, you look like a character of the Sopranos. Well, if you can trace your lineage directly back to somewhere in Italy and you have an ancestor who is an Italian citizen. So even if they were born before, creation of Italy, they might have been a citizen at some point before they left for America, then that is a citizenship that you should look at getting. Uh, very powerful one as well. Of course, Italy is the European Union, so you're going to be able to reside anywhere you want in the European Union. It can also be, you know, in a country like Poland or Romania or, you know, maybe you want to live in Hungary, maybe you want to live in the Baltic states like Latvia, then that has you covered for residency automatically. So we've done Irish and Italian citizenship by descent. Now I was gonna leave it at that for the Western European EU nationalities that are popular to get by descent, it's particularly if you're from North America. But last night, then a client called me and said that his father has applied for German citizenship by descent and was wondering whether he could also do so. So considering the enormous number of German Americans or German Canadians or maybe German Brazilians, German Russians, German Kazakhstanis that there are in the world. We was remiss of me not to mention German citizenship by descent. Now the law is extremely complicated. There is a new law on German nationality that affects this from 2021. And a lot of it is to do with previous gender discrimination, which meant that women, German citizens who were women who married a foreign man lost their citizenship and then couldn't pass it on to their children in the past. So part of the law tries to rectify that because if you had been a German man and married a foreign woman, it wasn't the same uh, consequence in terms of passing on citizenship or maintain, um, maintaining your own citizenship. So it depends on the date <laughs> uh, that they're married, where they were married or unmarried, when the child was born, your descendant potentially who was German. and. Um, Basically, it's extremely complex. There's a lot of dates and a lot of factors involved, but in principle, back to great grandparents who are German citizens, you can claim German citizenship by descent. So worth looking at if you are like the tens of millions of North Americans who have some German heritage, then it would be good to go and look at it and see how far back it goes and whether you can now claim it normally 
if, you know, it's just down to great grandchildren. So in my client's case, his father is probably eligible. It's not really clear how he can finagle a German passport since his father was not a German citizen when he was born. But we're going to look into it a bit further and see if there's a way to deal with that. So that is German citizenship by descent. Probably also going to be quite a popular one. So just in general, if you are looking for advice about how to either obviously get a second passport, but it might also be about moving here to Eastern Europe, to a country like Moldova for three to 12 months a year, down below in the description to this video is a link to my consulting. So we can set up a consulting call and then we can figure out together how to resolve the issue that you are looking to solve. So let's move on to this region and the plethora of nationalities that obviously you might be eligible for. Now here in Central and Eastern Europe, most popular are Hungarian and Bulgarian citizenships along with Romanian. So I would say they're the three most common for diasporas to be looking to regain their nationalities. All three are now members of the European Union. That's why it's particularly attractive. Now, obviously I'm here in Chisinau, as I pointed out, and helping my client with Moldovan and Romanian citizenship. So whilst obviously if you have, say, parents or grandparents from Romania, then as long as you're able to get the documentation together, you can apply for that nationality. So what a lot of people don't realize is that Romania actually gives citizenship to the descendants of people who lost their Romanian citizenship. It was without having formally renounced them themselves voluntarily. And they give that back actually a good few generations, can be up to great grandparents. So what happened is that some parts of the region, like here in Chisinau, were actually in Romania for a while. And the people who were living here at the time were Romanian citizens. And then here in Moldova was annexed into the Soviet Union. And what Romania says is those people, they involuntarily lost their Romanian citizenship. And now their descendants can come and reclaim that nationality. So there are actually an enormous number of Moldovans who have Romanian citizenship for that reason, because Moldova is not in the European Union, while Romania is. So it is particularly attractive for Moldovans or people who maybe have some Moldovan heritage to go and claim not just Moldovan citizenship, but also Romanian citizenship if they can get that. So there's also another part of Ukraine where I've been to before, uh, Ismail across the border uh, in Budjak, which is part of Odessa Oblast and Chernovsi Oblast, which also a lot of people who might have descendants from there because for a while it was also in Romania in the interbellum period you might be able to claim Romanian citizenship. In fact I saw a stat that 35 percent of Moldovans have a Romanian uh, passport, they have Romanian citizenship. So I haven't taken a straw poll here amongst my friends in Chisinau. I think it was something like 80 percent of them actually have Romanian citizenship and the other 20% were actually in the process of gaining it. So basically young people in particular, because they feel that they have more to gain by traveling and maybe living and working in the European Union, they're even more likely to apply for that remain citizenship if they're eligible. So I guess there's a religious ceremony probably going on here in the cathedral in the center of Kishnev, because in here some recitations of what sounds like some religious text. The Tsar experience, the in-person experience is how my client who I'm helping here actually found out about his Moldovan and Romanian passport well, through talking to me on the experience. And normally at the end of these videos, I emphasize a lot about you know, the relocation part and the benefits of living in this region, which I call New Europe, but you know, more or less Eastern Europe. So countries like Moldova, where I've been bringing my clients, uh, you know, with the Russo-Ukrainian war. I haven't been bringing clients to Russia or Belarus for obvious reasons. And unfortunately also not to Ukraine at the moment, although hopefully sometime in the near future that will change. We're bringing them to Almaty in Kazakhstan. Absolutely phenomenal city, especially in the summer, so green there beautiful nature like the lakes, 
the canyons and the mountains. You can also go skiing there in winter. Riga, the capital of Lafayette in the Baltics. Ridiculously hot Riga in terms of the nightlife in particular. And to Warsaw, the capital of Poland, which I see as now the kind of central hub, like almost like the capital of the eastern part of the European Union, a uh, couple of this new Europe it is growing really quickly. I think the population of Warsaw grew like 15-20% in one year because of the number of refugees coming from Ukraine and there is a huge diaspora also of Belarusians in the city so very interesting rapidly growing uh, central hub infrastructure has been developed as, as well in Warsaw definitely a very interesting city to choose uh, in the current circumstances. So in this end of the video I'm going to talk about a little bit more what I worked on with this particular client in addition to the citizenships we actually looked at his photos for his Instagram in particular I just noticed with clients that in general a lot of them neglect to build out their Instagram properly Instagram today is really like a dating CV and my clients are nearly always single guys coming to the region so while a lot of them they go on to apps like Tinder or some other online dating they often neglect the basically the biggest dating site in the world which is not actually a dating site officially which is Instagram and building out their value there and just having you know a good initial set of photos or little video clips for their profile that's going to represent their value and values and just something that when clients come to me here it's actually also been the last two or three clients actually three clients in Almaty and Riga and in Warsaw that we also worked a little bit on their photos, got some nicer photos, and then just improved them a little bit with FaceApp. Basically, it just uses artificial intelligence to make the person look a little bit more attractive, not to catfish, not just, just a tiny, tiny hint. So that's one thing that I really haven't worked on with clients. I see big value is actually developing out their Instagram. It can also be for business, not just for dating. It is nowadays a very important uh, platform to be good at representing yourself and the second thing that has been growing in importance and value on the in-person experience is the local social circle as I myself have been able to develop that uh, since the Russo-Ukrainian war moved into that hot phase when in February 2022 and I have been spending more times in the alternative cities I've been building out local social circles that my clients can just tap into and that is huge in terms of value you don't want to be billing nomads if you move to this region so you'll quite often see groups of digital nomads uh, or foreigners hanging out together and that's normally because they don't see themselves staying in each city very long maybe a month maybe two months maybe three months and then they'll head off somewhere else and continue on a travel adventure and as a result I don't think they're seen as particularly high value because they're not really investing in being around the city in the long term and on top of that they're kind of hanging out with each other no we don't learn the local language either and that means that the local people don't just kind of see them as tourists at the end of the day like an extended uh, stay you can kind of say that nowadays digital nomads are a little bit like glorified backpackers used to be maybe 10 years ago the backpackers would come in stay for a week or two go where it's cheap and then head on and the next city on their destination that's all fine if you're doing that experience but it's not really seen as high value by local people who are in general the ones who are high value themselves so that is something that is really really um, valuable that I provide also in person experience but it is not for everybody so down below is an application form it is by application only I do not take everybody who is interested in coming, have to make sure that you're a good fit for the experience. And before you do that, just quickly go and look if you haven't already at a couple of playlists that I put together. You got number one, aligns the cities that I have been living this our experience with my clients, a few client testimonials in there as well, so that you get the flavor of the Zara experience and the cities that you might come and live the Zara experience with me in. And then the second playlist up above also down below in the description is my set of tutorials for dating the nines and tens which is basically shorthand for the uber beautiful of this region because this is the region of the world in my opinion with the highest concentration of female beauty so go check those out 
And down below, you have the application form. And a man, a famous Canuck of Polish, Ukrainian, Belarusian origins, Wayne Gretzky, he once said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So on that very wise adage, I will say, Laura Vederi, this Vidania. See you in the next video. Sar Experience.